Since the beginning of time, an ancient fraternity has held a mighty influence upon the sway of events in the world. Times continuously change, but this intriguing and secret society has remained throughout the ages. With the philosophy of liberty, equality, and fraternity, this society works towards protecting the oldest secrets of the known world. Although they are not a political organization, this fraternity has had an immeasurable effect on the creation and development of a successful constitution that has been successful in governing the United States for over 200 years. So what exactly is this intriguing and confounding society? That of the Freemasons, keepers of some of the nation's greatest and deepest secrets. What many may not know is that a large portion of our forefathers were not only notorious for their deeds which developed the country, but also for their membership in the Freemason fraternity. Even more interesting than this is the fact that out of the 39 men who signed the United States Constitution, 13 of these men were Freemasons. These men were Gunning Bedford Jr., John Blair, David Brearley, Jacob Broom, Daniel Carroll, Jonathan Dayton, John Dickinson, who wrote Letters from a Pennsylvania Farmer, Nicholas Gilman, Rufus King, James McHenry, William Patterson, and George Washington, the first president of the United States. From this fact alone, it becomes apparent that Freemasonry has had a very large effect on the development of the United States Constitution. To become a part of this secret society, there are a few requirements which you must fulfill. First, you must be a man of at least 21 years of age. Second, you need to have a belief in a supreme being, that is, any religion is welcome, although atheists are not welcome in society. You must also have a devotion to Freemasonry and the ability to sustain yourself while simultaneously paying dues to the Freemason society. Simply put, all you need to do to become a part of this Freemason society is ask another Freemason, most likely one who you are well acquainted with. However, very little is known about the Masonic initiation. Many think it goes like this. Who is it? Tis I. Password. I want to be a Freemason. Enter. Are you ready to become a Freemason? I am. You must cross the most arduous barriers, climb the highest mountains, and hold the oldest secrets of the known world. Are you ready? It sounds pretty cool. Extend your hand. You are a Freemason! Dang! Let's get ice cream! Yes! <laughs> However, it's probably more likely that it just looks something like this. To fully understand the Masonic influences in the Constitution, one must examine the Masonic Code. One very important quote in Masonic philosophy reads, Certain principles or fundamental truths which have been proven Freemasonry has gathered together or taken those by time to be necessary for right thinking and moral living, and presents these fundamentals to its initiates for their use in formulating their own personal philosophy of life or establishing their own personal code of moral living. In other words, one of the main purposes of Freemasonry is to encourage men to develop their own moral code or a system of beliefs which governs the way they live and behave. In the case of the Constitution, this personal code of moral living was developed by our forefathers and placed into a document which is both flexible and powerful in governing the United States of America. Another piece of Masonic philosophy which can be directly applied to the Constitution reads, let a man's religion or mode of worship be what it may. He is not excluded from the order, provide he believe in the architect of heaven and earth, and practice the sacred duties of morality. This freedom of religion obviously is one of the cornerstones of the Constitution, set forth there by our Freemason forefathers. The most blatant connection between Freemasonry and the Constitution lies in the twelfth point of the Regius Manuscript, which reads, There as the assembly held shall be, there shall be masters and fellows also, and other great lords many more. There shall be the sheriff of that country, and also the mayor of that city. The quote can best be connected to Article 2, Section 1 of the Constitution, which reads, He shall hold his office during the term of four years, and together with the vice president, who represents the mayor of the so-called cities, chosen for the same term, be elected as follows. By examining these documents, it's obvious that the Constitution was influenced by the philosophy of the Freemasons. Although this aspect of Freemasonry has finally been revealed, many aspects still remain hidden. One aspect, the so-called hidden treasure of the Freemasons, is discussed at length in Nicolas Cage's movie, National Treasure. By drawing on all of this evidence, only one conclusion can be reached. The philosophy of Freemasonry has had an immeasurable effect on the way in which the United States Constitution governs our life. With their intriguing philosophy and perplexing ways, the Freemason fraternity will forever hold a mighty influence within the United States.